The next skill we're going to be practicing is finding the arc length that's associated with a given radian measure of a central angle. So the important part is that you remember that you have to be working with angles that are in radians first, and then you have an easy formula which you can work with. Uh, what they want us to go back to is this, this formula that we have here, and theta is the angle in radians. So this is a radian measured angle that is based on S. S stands for the arc length. And the arc length just means it's the length of the edge of the circle. So it's really part of the circumference that we cut off on that circle. So it's a length or it's a measurement of the distance around the outside edge of the circle, which is circumference. And if you remember, if we go all the way around the circle once, it was 2 pi radians, which is the same thing as radius, or 2 pi, if you do it grammatically correct would be radii. We need about 6.28 lengths of the radius to go completely around the edge of the circle. And that's the approximation. This is the exact part. So this is what this formula is about. We got an angle that's in radians. The way that we know a radian measurement is by taking the arc length divided by r, which is the length of the radius. So what we're doing is we're being able to figure out how many radians there are or how many radii that we've got around the edge of the circle given an arc length. So if we were to take this equation and solve it for s, and that's what they do down below here is, if you solve this equation for s, we can always calculate the arc length by taking your angle, which is in radians, times the length of the radius. So this tells us how many radii it took, multiply it times the length of the radius, should give us our arc length. So we're going to use that in... Our next example here, um, I'm going to put in one more graphic illustration and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, I just want to grab that one little illustration of pi and 180 to bring it back to your front, forefront of our mind. So, in for A and B, what they want us to do is find the length of the intercepted arc in a circle with a given central angle and measure of the radius around the nearest tenth. So, we're going to calculate the arc length and we can calculate the arc length S by knowing the radius, the length of the radius, times the measure of the central angle, but this must be in radians. So if it's not in radians, we do a conversion first. So pretty straightforward task. If we're going to find the arc length. If we know our radius is 2 meters, we're going to take 2 times. This time they gave us the central angle, which is measured in radians. So we go 2 times pi times the radius, which is 3. It may be helpful to put the 2 over 1. So that you can see when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. You got 2 times 2, or 4 pi, divided by 3. So our arc length has a length of 4 pi thirds, um, and that's going to be measured in meters. So if you think about this, the 3 and the pi are virtually the same. Pi is 3.14 divided by 3s. So it's an arc length a little over 4 um, meters. So. Uh, they want us to round to the nearest hundredth, I guess, or the nearest tenth. I guess if they're wanting us to do that, the next thing that we do is we take 4 times pi. And we're going to find a pi key on this thing. can't read it from my screen. There it is, 4 pi. And then we want to take that and divide it by 3. And then we round to the nearest tenth. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit over 4. It's about 4.2 meters. Okay, very straightforward application of the formula. Just plug them in, grind them out, and round it to the nearest tenth. The second one is a little bit more complicated because this time they give us the central angle in degrees. The formula that we're given, S equals R times theta, is only workable if theta is given in radians. So the first thing we want to do is we want to convert 135 degrees into radians. So we know that we have this unit converter, so if we have 135 degrees, we want to convert it into radians. What we know is 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. And if we use this converter, we can get rid of the degrees and be completely into radians. So what we'll have is 135 pi over 180. Now it would be a little bit foolish to work with those large numbers when they'll reduce. Uh, both of these are divisible by, I believe, 45. So that'll go 45 going to 135 three times, it'll go into 180 four times, so really we're looking at a four pi, or four, three pi fours radian angle measurement. So plugging those values in, we can find our arc length S equals, in this one, our radius had a length of half a foot, 
we're going to take it times the radian angle measure, which is 3 pi force. And then we can multiply those together and find it to the nearest tenth. Since that's what the directions are, I guess we'll just go ahead and, and multiply those out and round it. So we've got a half. We got that times three. We got that times pi. You want to use that exact value of pi to your calculator. You want to divide that by, um, and then a four. Round it to the nearest tenth. We should have about a 1.2 foot arc point. So 1.2. So nothing too dramatic there. It's probably going to spend more time doing your unit conversions on your angle measurements than anything.